Thank you, brother and sister Willock, for um, reminding us part of the scripture reading. If I could touch, I know I'd be whole. I thought this morning um, we could um, focus a little bit on something that um, over the past few weeks um, we haven't really been able to experience much of it. And um, what am I talking about? I mean, obviously, since the start of the service, we've heard much about the word touch, haven't we? So that's what I'm talking about. Um, touch is one of the five senses, isn't it? And um, if there was to be, I don't know, a contest between the five senses, which do you think would be number one? I know you're unmuted. Um, so, um, some would say that seeing is um, the windows of um, the world. But um, taste and touch are actually connected. They're perhaps seen as um, separate senses, senses but um, actually um, taste is a form of touch, isn't it? And did you know that um, whilst we may be able to um, live, but it might be difficult, perhaps even impossible, to survive without taste or touch? And why is that? Because we would probably starve. Because so much of our existence is based on what we um, taste to decide whether it's poisonous or not and um, you know it's um, interesting um, seeing that you know with um, we may be able to survive without hearing and without sight but without taste and without touching it is um, going to be a very very difficult um, existence so um, as I'm saying um, over the past few weeks we've been experiencing this lockdown and we've not been able to do some of the things that we would normally take for granted like um, touching of course our loved ones apart from our household we've been suddenly told that we're forbidden from um, doing a number of things we've heard terms like lockdown social isolation um, quarantine you know, quarantining, you probably associate with um, quarantining an animal or something, but um, um, certainly over the past few weeks, um, months, um, it's all about um, if we are to survive this coronavirus, um, we need to quarantine ourselves, isolate ourselves. We had a little experience of that when we went on holiday, um, just before the whole thing um, became a bit of a crisis. We were, of course, away and um, Whilst we were there, the people who started, um, of course, wearing masks and um, it was all very strange because it was almost as if if you didn't have a mask, you were standing out rather than those who did have a mask. And then on our way back, it was a bit of a, um, you know, um, a drama because where we were intending to go to, um, we couldn't go. We got to the airport and we were told that we've got to turn back. Um, we didn't really want to turn back, but neither could we return home because um, there was a problem there. So um, for a few days, we were experiencing the effect of um, this isolation, but we tried hard to make it not deter us from um, enjoying the time away. So back to the um, thing. Yes, we've been used to hugging and kissing and embracing and um, doing all manner of things as a way of um, displaying our affection, displaying our love to others. But that has been lacking. And I wonder, um, as a result of not being able to do so, whether we've actually um, understood the importance, the significance of, um, of touching. We um, hear from the scripture reading that um, there are a few people in the Bible who Jesus touched in the story of um, the woman who had been bleeding for mo much of her life, 12 years, she was hemorrhaging. 
she was isolated. Brother Griffiths actually referred to this lady a couple of weeks ago in his sermon. She was isolated by the fact that um, not only was she weakened by this um, affliction, she was distanced by the society because of the law of the land at the time. She tried a number of um, ways of um, getting healed. People have made a refer have referred her to doctors who have um, taken advantage of her. She's probably been to some other people who are giving nothing more than maybe potions and pills and um, concoctions and whatever to make her feel better. But still, it didn't work. It left her broke, left her penniless. She couldn't um, really go and see a lot of people because, um, again, she was isolated. And those who were seen with her would also be made unclean. So how did she hear about this Jesus? Well, of course, um, it had been said in the Bible and a number of um, texts that Jesus was going about um, healing people. And he wasn't consciously actually um, necessarily doing it. Some people just by touching him, being among him, they were healed. So she thought that maybe there is hope here for me. But how was a sick, weak woman who um, isolated from society going to be in touch with um, Jesus? What could she do? She could bore away, force her way, elbow, nudge her way um, to, but there was a big crowd, remember? I don't know if you've had the experience of going to a match or you've been to a, um, um, a concert in a theater or something, and um, after it's all done, you're trying to rush out what that would have felt like. You've probably been on some transport, maybe the underground or something where, you know, everybody, it's a norm to actually be beside each other under each other's armpits and stuff, you know, um, because that's the way it was. Now this woman, that couldn't really be an easy thing to want to see Jesus, but she had one thing on her side, determination. When you determine to do something, it is not just the physical constraint, but the mental can actually make you do it. So she decided, if I could just touch him, I would be made whole. Surely that was going to be a price worth paying for. So she decided that, um, yes, I'm going to do that. By actually being determined, she was premeditating the situation premeditating in that she had to plan, she had to time, she had to prepare herself. Don't forget that she was weak and she had to compete against all these people who were rushing and barging and elbowing and all the rest of it. So how did she do it? She was determined that, you know, maybe this was her only opportunity to um, make herself normal. We'll find out later that actually she was more than made normal, she was made whole. But um, what was interesting about this is that um, this touch that she eventually was able to um, get by touching the hem of Jesus's garment, it had a sort of ironic effect, by which I mean it wasn't just a touch. It was Jesus's feeling of the touch that made the difference to other people who had been um, in contact with Jesus. And yes, they were made whole because in the crowd by just being among him, they were made, um, they, 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 they were cured. But in this woman's case, it was a touch amid all the hustle and bustle Even the disciples were saying to Jesus, how can you be asking such a question? You know, all these people are around and you're asking who touched me? Now, Jesus knew that this was no ordinary touch. He said, no, somebody had touched me because power had gone from me. I don't know if um, many of you, any of you have actually had an experience where you've touched an electric, a volt of electricity. Not to be recommended, of course, but um, sometimes it happens. Um, I've had um, that where you touch not a big um, power supply, but maybe a light, a, a live wire, and you feel a sensation 
you know, that something's going. Maybe that's the kind of sensation that Jesus might have felt um, when this woman touched the hem of his garment. Not touch him, not embrace him, just touch the hem of his garment. But it was enough to attract Jesus's attention. So when he asked who touched me, and disciples were um, saying, well, you know, this, this is a daft question. I mean, how can you ask it? Jesus knew what um, he was talking about. And it was difficult for the woman then to hide herself because she had to declare herself to Jesus. And do you remember what we said about the woman, that she was isolated, she was despised, she was rejected by society? By actually touching Jesus and declaring herself, she was not only healed, she was made whole. So she was actually a better person than when she was um, inflicted with this um, illness. So, you know, these is um, the power. Now, Jesus did a very strange thing. Given that this woman was isolated and people, if they thought that she was unclean, would probably label her, target her, and they would not themselves want to be associated because um, they themselves would be made unclean. Jesus identified her. Why do you think Jesus identified her? You know, what was there to be gained by um, telling the woman or actually um, declaring who touched me, forcing her to actually come and reveal herself? Well, I think that there were um, a couple of possibilities. Neither Luke nor Mark, who um, narrated um, this story, gave us particular reasons why he did so. But it is possible that given where this woman was and who she was, what she had experienced. Um, he wanted to, not, as part of the making whole process, it was one of the first steps to the burdens of uncleanness from, um, from her. He was um, wanting to accept her. He wasn't shouting at her, why did you mingle yourself to contaminate others? He actually blessed her with God's peace. He called her, and listen, he called her daughter. So she'd actually developed a new identity. No longer was she disassociated. She was actually a child. She became a daughter. By, um, by, by, it is also clarifying that this didn't happen by magic and our superstition, because by making this declaration, it was telling people that this woman didn't just get healed by chance. She got healed by the faith that she had because Jesus actually said, woman, your faith has made you whole. So by so declaring this woman, not only for herself, but for others to see her, she was a totally different um, um, individual. So um, having touched um, the hem of his garment, sometimes, of course, we go to God, we go to, um, we pray to God, and we're, has, we're asking him to touch us and make us whole. And of course, in the case of the woman, that was what she wanted. But how many times is it perhaps more relevant for us to touch Jesus rather than for him to touch us? Because by touching him, we're coming in faith. And by touching him, we're also believing that he can make <coughs> a difference to our lives. Now, the word touch... Um, Obviously, we know what it um, means. Um, I was trying to find, um, you know, songs that are associated with um, touching, and there are one or two in the um, in, in, in our hymnals. Um, Brother and Sister Willock have just um, um, sang um, a song on um, the woman, but one of the most famous songs today is um, "He Touched Me." Now. I actually thought that the song he touched me was inspired by this woman's experience. But William Gaither and his wife, Gloria, um, they were actually um, inspired to write this song because an evangelist had asked them to, you need to write a song about touching. That was really what inspired them to write a song. This guy was, um, this evangelist, he was saying that there are so many examples of Jesus touching 
that um, you know there wasn't a song. Now the Gaithers had written about fifty odd songs up until then, and nothing was um, not, not many people knew a great deal about them. But that one song made in 1963 made the um, it, well, it didn't actually make them famous. The song that they wrote in 1963, it was in 1971. It was made more famous by um, Elvis Presley, who actually did an album called He Touched Me. Now, the words of that song was, um, again, like I said, more about the difference that the preacher was making in these people's lives. Bill Gates has said that it's wonderful to see how this song has touched the hearts of so many people throughout the years, reminding us of the life-changing hope and joy that can be found in Jesus. Now, we um, are not always privileged to hear a writer of a song from a hymn book who is alive and can talk. I mean, can you imagine what it would be like to see um, some of the great writers um, of um, songs um, years gone by? Some of them are 200 years, 150 years and so on. But um, Bill Gaither is actually still alive. And what I'm going to do is to um, um, get that song played at the conclusion of this so that it can, we can be reminded. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Aisha if she could um, say a poem, please. Yes. Good afternoon. Okay, can we all hear? Pardon? Sorry, I'm wondering if we can all hear. Go ahead, please, Aisha. This, the poem is entitled, Reach Out and Touch the Lord. In a dark and stormy night on the Sea of Galilee, the disciples were so fearful of the fury of the sea. When upon the raging water walked the blessed Lord of life, he calmed the troubled waters as he walked away. Matthew sat in worldly honor, taking text from those who came. When the Savior walked before him and called him by his name, Come and follow me, he whispered, not to stop and question why. Matthew rose and followed Jesus as he walked by. Bartimaeus once sat by the wayside, a begging with no one to help him, till Jesus came by and heard his sad cry. He touched his blind eyes, and he healed him that day. When upon the dusty wayside, on his way to raise the dead, Mighty was the throne that pressed him, hungry for the living bread. I must touch him, cried the woman. I must touch him, or I die. Reach out and touch the Lord as he walks by. You'll find him not too busy to hear you when you cry. He is passing every moment. All your needs he will supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he walks by. Amen. Amen. Reach out and touch the Lord as he walks by. So touching Jesus is actually what matters. It's not so much wanting Jesus to touch us. That is important. But we must reach out to touch him that he in turn will touch us. And hopefully, like with the woman, he can make us whole. He can transform our lives. He can make all the difference to us. All we have to do is believe. Many are healed by calling on the name of the Lord, but not all do so in faith. That attracts the attention that attracted Jesus's attention. And we know that whilst many would have been healed with this particular woman, she had a joy, she had a peace that was completely different from other people. And we can experience that as well. Bill Gaither said that since I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I shout it while eternity rolls. Now, Corona might be doing all it can to distance us and separate us from touching, but let's not. Um, allow that to happen. You know, there's a program on the radio recently where they were talking about is handshaking a thing of the past. Now, we don't want to um, be thinking that touching 
is something that we're going to go away from because it is important to us. And the most important touch is, of course, the Lord touching us and us reaching out and touching him. So let's hope and pray that um, the Lord will give us strength. He will send his love and that through that, nothing will be able to separate us. Let us reach out and touch the Lord. Amen. 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 And we'll be, um, the last song is going to be, um, actually, um, it's a con it's a live situation with Bill Gaither and his um, band, but I thought it's appropriate that um, we played with him singing it. Like I said, it's not very often that you get a hymn writer alive to do his um, um, singing his own song or their own song. So let us um, listen to the um, song in conclusion. Like I said, let's um, hope that um, some of these thoughts and some of these words will touch us and that we may touch others, that um, we can all reach out and um, touch the Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray. We thank you, Lord, for your life towards us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for giving us the senses, Lord, and thank you for sending your son to die for us. Lord, we hear your stories about how much you've um, been able to make differences in people's lives, and we ask you to help us that we may claim these promises that you give that um, if we reach out, you can touch us. So please um, help us and bless us that we may share your love, that we may join fellowship with you, and that um, we may all be made whole, free from our guilt or past or diseases or whatever is wrong with us, Lord. Please help us like the woman who you healed and made whole. We ask you to do the same for us. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 I'd like to thank Brother Crosdale for allowing the Lord to use him to deliver to us his message. Uh,